you that we do not want to despise your grace. Help us not to despise your grace, but to accept your grace in every aspect of salvation. In Jesus' name. The command of the Lord is to be filled with the Spirit and the command of the Lord is to be speaking to yourself, it says, in Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Now, the speaking, when it comes to Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, means you sing them. Of course, because you, necess- you don't repeat a song, you don't repeat a hymn, you sing them. So, When it says speaking to yourselves, that doesn't mean you're just kind of muttering. It means you're using your voice. But it means that it's not interpreted. Because the Apostle Paul uses the same phrase in 1 Corinthians 14 where he says, if there is no interpreter present. Now, what I'm speaking about right now is the gift of tongues. But when the Apostle Paul said, be filled with the Spirit, that is not the gift of tongues. That is the tongues that come with the baptism of the Holy Spirit that is a gift from Jesus. And that's that's all tied up with the baptism of the Spirit. The baptism of the Spirit means you speak in tongues. That's it. Being filled with with the Spirit means you speak in tongues. But when, when, when it comes to a gift of tongues, that's the gift of the Holy Spirit. When you pray or worship or sing in other tongues, you can do it any time. You can start singing any minute. You just have to sing. That's all. Just sing. Just make up your mind you're going to sing. And you sing in tongues. And if, if you want to sing a hymn, you say to yourself, I'm singing a hymn. And a hymn is different from a psalm. And a psalm is different from a song. And as I've said before, we've taught congregations of pastors to do this. And they do it immediately. You sing a psalm. Then you sing a hymn different. The psalm is more about what God has done in your life. You look at all the psalms. A hymn can be martial. A hymn can be praise, full of praise. A hymn can be exalting the Lord. You see, it's a different subject and the Holy Spirit will work in that different subject according to your faith as it ex- is it expressed in saying to yourself, well, I'll sing a psalm. Then you say, I'll sing a hymn. And we, we've done this to the congregations and said, okay, we're going to sing a, sing a psalm. And then we stop and I'll say, we sing a hymn. Immediately, everybody's in a different tongue and a different atmosphere in their being, you know. And so we do that there. And that is not the gift of tongues because you do it at will. You cannot use the gift of tongues at will except you will to use your faith and if it's an appropriate time in a meeting and if there is something the Lord wants to say specifically, well, it could happen that you get it there and then by faith, but it's not according to your will. You haven't willed to do it. You've willed to exercise faith in the hope that maybe that will work there and then. You do the same with prophecy. Like, like if you're prophesying over people, which of course you would never have done yet. When you're prophesying over people, you just, you use your faith. And you also have to use your will because you're generally laying hands on them. And you use your faith that the Lord is going to speak things out that relate to them. And I personally very rarely say anything about a future thing that might happen to them because I don't think the Lord specifically wants us to know the future things that are going to happen to us and unless he sovereignly tells us. But it will be something of encouragement and it will be something in line with their experience. And that happens because people then say, yeah, yeah, that was really about me. And we did have one uh, a few years ago I, I said uh, that I said to this person, as he told me about last time we were there, and it happened in 2001. And this is a few years previously. I think he said 2001 was it? Uh, it wouldn't have been that far back, surely. Yeah, I, we we were there in 2001. Yeah. Well, anyway, it went back right to there when he said I said to him 
that he needed to be careful of women and something else, which I now forget. And he told me last year, when he happened to be in a meeting, he came forward the year before it was, and he said to me through the translator, he said, you prophesied over me in 2001, and he said, what you sin was, said was really so. He said, I have had to be careful of women. And so when you're doing that, it is more by faith. And, but when you're praying in other tongues, it is always your will, always faith, and sometimes a sovereign act of God in a specific anointing. Not always. Most of the time it never will be. Except when you get into a, a depth of the Spirit and there's something working in your life and day after day as you go back to it, you seem to go back to that depth. But we all have different experiences as we go on. The thing is we have to go on. The thing is we have to dare. And another thing is we have to get intense many times. Now, sometimes we physically don't like, feel like getting intense. You know, we could be tired. We could have had a, a real problem. But there are times when it's easier to get intense. You have to get intense, intensify. You start speaking in tongues uh, or you start singing in tongues. And we don't want to stay in that area where we just kind of lackadaisical and doing it like we're a fairy or sitting in a field gathering daisies. Yeah. Many times we got to get into it. Yeah. We have to get in the attack mode. Yeah. Now, we're not attacking the devil. No. We're not attacking the devil. But we get into an attack mode of fervor. And no wonder the Apostle Paul said in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, maybe verse 17, be fervent in spirit. Why did he say that? Our spirit that's full of the Holy Spirit is so fervent that we do the acts of God in the Holy Ghost, that we pray fervently in the Holy Ghost. We've got to get fervent, you know, and get with it. The same applies to singing. Now, why he said, speak to yourselves or sing to yourselves, is not to do with the fact I'm just muttering to myself. It's to do with the fact you're, you're talking to God, you're singing to God, but it's not interpreted. Because in 1 Corinthians 14, he says, if somebody has, has a, a word in other tongues and there's no interpreter and you know this happens habitually and there's no interpreter, he says, don't do it, just talk to yourself. Remember? See, it's in relation to having interpretation. And so uh, when we, we say to sing in other tongues in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs in, uh, to yourself, it means out loud, together, but there's no interpretation. So here you have a meeting full of people worshipping, singing in other tongues with no interpretation, and that's totally scriptural. Yeah. Very scriptural so scriptural that most churches who don't do it are disobedient to the scripture. We are disobedient to the scripture. Well, let's face facts. If God says we should do this and we're not doing it, and we've read it and know it, we're disobedient. Now the Bible does say, to him who knoweth to do good and doeth it not, it is sin. So, you know, there are exemptions. God's not hitting everybody all over the world because they're not doing it. The spirit is grieved. Put it that way. It says, grieve not the spirit of God. The spirit of God is grieved. The grace of God is being disregarded. How often have we done that? And those of us who've known the gifts of the spirit and let them go into obeisance sometimes as... as if you've been on it on the track for 50 or 60 years, you have done. Well, okay, I've done. Uh, I'll just talk about myself. Yeah. I won't look at anybody else. I've done it. You know, and I was just thinking this morning, when you do that, you're coming against the grace of God. You're not giving reverence to the grace of God. We're not receiving the grace of God. 
We're going against the grace of God. So we have to exercise our faith and our will not to go against the grace of God. 